Hello everyone, this is Shubham Alok. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And in this video today, I am going to talk about a great Navamsha secret. This secret will help you understand how Navamsha works. This is, uh, you can say, this is my own understanding. And I should make it very clear that whatever I teach, whatever I write is all my own research. And I am very much against copying anyone's ideas, copying anyone's teaching. Whatever I do is it is either my understanding of classical shlokas and classics, or it is my own research. I highly condemn and uh, disregard copying the ideas, writings, of anyone else whatsoever in any form, etc. There's another thing that I want to, you know, clarify maybe better. Uh, the thing is, you know, like, what do you call a technique? Uh, some people call, you know, like if they talk about moon Saturn combination and what does this combination do, they call it a technique. It is a technique, but this technique is more focused on making people understand about themselves, making people understand about their own horoscopes and making people understand the horoscopes of those around them who have this particular combination. Whereas there are some other type of techniques which does not aim at helping you understand your horoscopes or horoscopes of others, but actually is aimed at making people able to make predictions. And the principle that I'm going to share right now in this video is one such principle which helps you in making predictions through horoscopes, right? The principle. There is a classical shloka regarding the uses of Navamsha. First, I will want to talk about the shloka. The shloka says that if Venus is in the Navamsha of Mars, as affected by Mars, or if Venus is in the Navamsha of Mars and Mars is in the Navamsha of Venus, one have insatiable sexual desire. They have extra metal affair and they have affair with many as their sexual urge cannot be satisfied. If Venus is in the Navamsha of Saturn, Saturn is in the Navamsha of Venus or Venus in the Navamsha of Saturn is aspected by Saturn. Then one will have same gender relationship. One will, the woman will satisfy herself with a penis made up of some object, whereas a male will satisfy himself through masturbation, etc. All these things. There are two takeaways from this technique. First of all, it says that if Venus is aspected by Mars, is this aspect in D1 or D9? In my practice, I have found it working in both D1 and D9. Another thing is, Talking of Saturn in the Navamsha of Venus, Venus in the Navamsha of Saturn, or Mars in the Navamsha of Venus, Venus in the Navamsha of Mars, it is talking of an exchange between these two planets, indicating that exchange is valid and legitimate in Navamsha. But the question is, or what I want to do in this video is to break this shloka further. All those horoscopes where this combination is present, extramarital affair or relationship on, of the same gender is seen. But the point is, in all those cases where such things happen, is this combination present? Actually, to be very honest with you, my method of doing astrology is somehow different. When someone comes across a horoscope where there is an extramarital, when where an extramarital affair has happened, and they are aware of this combination, but this combination is not present, what they do is they go on to search for new or other principles that I don't do. And I am against doing it because I firmly believe that when you make a combination going out of the bonds of the classics of astrology, the combination is not that accurate and it is not infallible also. Right. So remaining in the bond of the 
classics and the instructions of our sages, I go on to search for fundas. For that, what I will do, I will break this competition. There are three things. Uh, Venus in the Navamsha of Mars, suspected by Mars. Venus in the Navamsha of Mars, first combination. And the auxiliary combination is either Mars also goes to Navamsha of Venus or Mars aspects. First being the primary condition, second condition is third condition is complementary condition. Either of the second or the third combination should be present to make it a complete combination. When the complete combination is made, one will have extra metal affair for sure. There is no doubt into it. But when all the three combinations are present, then extra metal is for sure guaranteed. Certainly, the aspect of Mars over Venus is to be seen in D9 also, D1 also. It works at both places. But my point is, when only the Venus is in the Navamsha of Mars and other two conditions are not fulfilled, will this happen? The answer is yes. But for that matter, Mars also have to be connected to the seventh house. Otherwise, this will not happen. Many a times we see a horoscope where Venus is into the Navamsha of Mars and such things does not happen. This is because Mars is not connected to the seventh house. In other words, I can tell you one more combination based on the same lines. If there is any malefic connected to the seventh house, malefic being connected to the seventh house, it is destroying or disrupting the seventh house. Now, if this malefic is also a male planet, Sun, Mars, Saturn for this matter also. If this planet connect Rahu as well, but there is no Navamsha for Rahu, so leave Rahu. Any male planet, any malefic connected to the seventh house will create disturbance in marriage. And if it is a male planet, it will create problems of male gender or rather say problems related to extramarital affair. And, you know, out of dharma relationship, out of dharma sexuality and all such things. If Venus is present in the Navamsha of those planets also who are male and is connected to the seventh house. In other words, you say just by Venus situated in the Navamsha of Mars, Sun or Saturn in those cases where they are connected to the seventh house in the T1 chart also makes a combination for extramarital affair. Right? Venus in the Navamsha of Mercury or Venus in the Navamsha of Saturn when it is connected to the seventh house in the T1 chart as well makes a combination for someone having same gender relationship also. Now the point is why this happens? Let's try to understand. Go deeper into it and you will be presented with a gem of a technique. Venus is the Karka for sexuality. Venus is the Karka for woman. Venus is the Karka for companionship. Venus is the Karka for sexual partner. And Venus is the Karka for marriage. When Venus goes to the Navamsha of Mars, it is influenced by Mars, which is the Karka for insatiable desire, lot of fire, lot of sexuality, uncontrolled desires. And, you know, as Mars is commander-in-chief, you know, commander-in-chief will kill someone and will get more angry and more motivated to kill more people. When Venus is influenced by this, Venus also have the tendency of having sexual, sexual relationship first and then getting motivated by it and then going into more and more and more of relationships as the knight or the commander in chief goes on to kill more and more and more people being motivated by the previous killings. Right? In Saturn, see, I don't know why people resort to same gender relationship now. There can be many aspects that I don't understand. I'm very free to admit it. I don't have, I never had a same gender relationship. So certainly I don't know, right? But the society or the times of sages and why same gender relationships happened then. We find that in earlier times when people used to go on a long travel away from their wives and children, for long times and when they used to you know travel alone only with men around them for long times they tend to form a 
male to male relationship. Text like Kama Sutra, Anangra, etc. Recommend Oparishtaka to be done in such matters. Oparishtaka is generally done male to male and other such things, you know. I don't want to talk more about it. <laughs> right. So the thing is, Venus who is the Karka for sexuality, Venus who is the Karka for relationship, Venus who is the Karka for sexual desire. When it gets influenced by Saturn, who's the karka for misery, who's the karka for deprivation, who's the karka for not having much resources, tells us that now the person, this person will go into a situation in life where he will be left with no resources, where he, where he will be left with no options, there will be a deprivation, there will be a sacrosity, which will lead him to have a same gender relationship. Just one aspect of it, as I have already told you, I don't know why people have same gender relationships. So there can be many other factors also which I am unaware of. Pardon me for that. Coming back to my point, you must have uh, watched a picture, a photo, where there is a black beard hidden under the jacket of a white beard, black evil, evil beard under the jacket of a white, cute white beard. And you know, he is opening the chain of the white beer, and inside that there is a black beer, black beer, or there's a wolf. This is the same condition. When a planet goes to the Navamsha of another planet, he actually wears the cloth of that planet. Rather say he is motivated by that planet. The motivation, like when Venus goes to the Navamsha of Mars, the Venus is motivated by Mars. And this is the technique. It also works with aspect as well. As we have seen that the Martian aspect will also cause the same result, right? So it works with aspect also. This is motivated by them. Understand it this way. Sun, who is the Karaka of self-respect, when he goes to the Navamsha of, say, Mars, then the self-respect of the native is hurt or ego kicks in when the effort and the sacrifice indicated by the commander-in-chief Mars, when the effort and the sacrifice of the person is not recognized or not given due credit. Right? Sun is also the Karaka for power. And when sun goes to the Navamsha of Saturn, one seeks power in their work. One seeks power in the things that they do. One seeks power in those matters which he is responsible for. Right? This all comes from the significations of sun. In the same way, the Navamsha occupied by moon or the aspects over moon in Navamsha indicate which things give you mental happiness or which things give you mental sadness. The Navamsha occupied by Mars tells you which thing leads you to anger. The Navamsha of Mercury tells you what is the motivation of learning. The Navamsha of Jupiter tells you the motivation of wisdom. The Navamsha of Venus we have already explained, right? And it has to be understood in the same way. This, this is the motivation, right? And this is the basic technique. And not only the natural signification of the planet, but as I have hinted before, the functional signification of the planet should also be taken into consideration. For example, if someone is having Jupiter in the Navamsha of Mercury, the wisdom of Jupiter is focused in the area of Mercury. So the wisdom of the native is focused in the gain of intelligence. One gets his wisdom through reading. One gets his wisdom through interaction. One gets his wisdom through talking. Jupiter is the kind of wisdom and Mercury is the kind of all of these things. Now say this Mercury is also the lord of the third house. And this Mercury is also the lord of the tenth. Uh, third house and uh, you see sixth house. So because of the third house, 
right? Jupiter in the Navamsha of Mercury and Mercury is the Lord of the third house and sixth house. So being the Lord of the third house, the wisdom comes through writing, the wisdom comes through communication and being the Lord of the sixth house, the wisdom comes through competitions. The wisdom comes through competitors, the wisdom comes through employees and the wisdom comes through these things, right? So the another point or the most important point that I am making here is that a planet is motivated by his Navamsha law. The power of the planet is focused towards the significations naturally owned by the Navamsha lord of the planet and is acquired by the Navamsha lord through his house lordships in the Divancha. This is what I am telling you. This is the technique that I find after thinking on this classical shloka, after experimenting with it a bit, and after testing it on real horoscopes. Right? So this is something that needs to be understood, and as I have told you before, my astrological principles are not focused on the concept of you know that you know someone uh, tells you the combination for having a particular profession say someone tells you a combination for being an engineer and you know he he lists you 20 combinations which makes one an engineer this these principles are made for you know this purpose that you will write these principles and check it in your own horoscopes and check it in the horoscopes of the people you know and then you will predict. And this is in reality a difficult task. Rather, you should know how to find the profession which leads you to the, which leads you to find profession for any horoscope. And by learning such principles, only you will be able to make predictions and you will actually become an astrologer. The first case of telling you 20 combinations for becoming an engineer is only good for self-exploration using your own horoscopes and using the horoscopes of the known ones, right? So my purpose is to make you an astrologer and I'm teaching you that astrology which helps you predict and foresee events beforehand for yourself and for the people around you, right? And there is one more announcement. I have done a Navamsha course of five classes before where I have covered all the basics of Navamsha and many things related to Navamsha have uh, revealed a dasha based on Navamsha and that course have been a super hit houseful course. All the students who have enrolled in this course have greatly benefited from the course and their predictive abilities and skills have greatly uh, developed greatly and have seen a great leap. The feedback video of this of that course is also on my YouTube channel that you can check. And thinking of the betterment of students, I am now doing the level two of the Navamsha course, which is a two-day webinar on 11th and 12th of July 2022 from 8 p.m. onwards, where I am going to teach advanced levels of Navamsha. I am going to teach a new indigenous self-developed technique that I have developed for reading Navamsha, which is a very brilliant and beautiful and gives you those insights in a horoscope which cannot be otherwise found. And along with this, I am also going to teach how to rectify the Navamsha chart. I am also going to reveal a new Navamsha dasha and new techniques for timing events using Navamsha, which was not revealed before ever not even not in the first Navamsha course. And along with this, I am also going to talk about some very miraculous Navamsha remedies, which I have given to my clients and which have worked very brilliantly. In this uh, two-day Navamsha webinar that I'm going to do on 11th and 12th of July, the admission for the same is open. And if anyone is interested, you can just drop me a message and inquire if you can be accommodated in the course or not. And this is, a uh, a separate level. So if, uh, though I strongly recommend you to do the level one because that is a very good course, but still to come in the second level of the Navamsha course, it is not necessary for you to have the first level of the Navamsha course. And I think, I don't know, I have told it before or not, but I 
always teach those techniques, formulas, and principles that I have developed myself. And I hold, I strongly desist teaching principles or techniques copied from anyone else whatsoever. Right? So to have the real nectar of Jyotish and to get those researches and techniques which are marvelous, which helps you a lot in reading horoscopes and uh, lets you discover those dimensions which cannot be understood otherwise, which helps you make great predictions and give great remedies which because they are developed by me, they are researched completely by me. They cannot be found anywhere else. If you want to learn CTS astrology and be able to predict for your horoscope and the horoscope of other ones. And if you actually want to foresee future events and predict things for yourself and everyone around you, you should join the course and take a leap from self-exploration astrology to the real knowledge and nectar of Jyotish. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good day.